Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we left off talking about zero over zero, and it is the in, in, determinate form. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this. So here's the concept. I got two ideas for the concept. Here's the first one. Let's say I have the limit as x approaches zero of x over x. So using my limit properties, you know that you're going to get the limit as x approaches zero on the top, and you're going to get the limit as x approaches zero on the bottom. And from that, you know that you're going to get zero over zero, which is the indeterminate form. So this is jumping ahead and using limit properties right away. But what if we did it a little bit differently? What if we got rid of a zero factor? Now that's not going to make much sense at the moment, but what if we got rid of the zero factor? In other words, what if we reduce a an expression before we take the limit. To get rid of a zero on top and bottom. Now again, that's not going to make much sense right now. But when you go back and reread your notes again, that's going to make a lot more sense. So what I want to do is I want to factor, before I take the limit, I want to factor out a zero term. Now in this case, I've got x over x. And right now, x does not equal zero because I haven't taken the limit. In fact, x never does equal zero. It gets closer and closer and closer to zero. So in turn, x is never, ever, ever equal to zero here in this statement. So what that means I can do is, I can do this before I take the, the limit. I can reduce the top and reduce the bottom, and I can get one. And so now if I take the limit, as x approaches zero, one doesn't give a darn what's happening, and we get an answer of one. So that's kind of interesting. I have two different answers depending on whether I take the limit first or if I do a little bit of algebraic manipulation, then take the limit. So the question is, which one's right? Well, let's think about the graph. So let's consider the graph of f of x equals x over x. And let's consider the limit as x approaches 1, oh, not 1, 0, of x over x, or f of x. And what that's going to look like as a table of values is I would choose values of x that are going to get closer and closer to 1, and I have x over x here. So if I choose values of x, that are getting around one. Now, I'm not doing a, a perfect limit chart here. I'm not doing a left-hand limit. You know what, perhaps I should. Let's do a left-hand limit and a right-hand limit. So here is the left-hand limit. So I'm gonna choose values of x that are less than one. So it's going to be negative one point, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001. So this is for the left-handed limit. This is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of x over x. And look what's happening. It's going to be negative 0 0.1 over negative 0 0.1, and that equals 1. This one's going to be negative 0 0.01 over negative 0 0.01, and that's going to be 1. And the next one's going to be 1. And if we continue all the way down, you're going to see that it's going to be approaching 1. So the left-hand limit is definitely 1. Let's look at the right-hand limit. I'll do it in a different color. So the right-hand limit, x approaches 0 from the right of x over x. So again, using a table of values, I'm going to choose values of x that are greater than 0. So 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 
and it's x over x, so it's 0 0.1 over 0 0.1, which is 1, 0 0.01 over 0 0.01, which is 1, 0 0.001 over 0 0.001, which is 1, and as you can see, this too is approaching 1 as I get closer and closer to 0. So if I have the left-hand limit equals 1, and if I have the right-hand limit equals 1, that means using charts, which is the most accurate way of doing a limit ever, must equal 1, which means our second answer is in fact correct. Okay? And what this would look like as a graph, by the way, it would look like this. So the limit, as x approaches 0, either from the left or from the right, is at the y value of 1. And you can put that into Desmos if you want. Be careful with Desmos because it won't show the open circle. Desmos can't show the open circle. So you have to go to the chart, and the chart will show you that there's an undefined value here. So you can use Desmos to sketch this puppy. Okay, so go to Desmos, sketch that puppy. You're going to see that it makes a nice, beautiful line across here. It's going to look like it's solid. It's not. Change it to the table value, and you're going to notice that it's going to show you a table here. You'll have negative 1 equals 1. You'll have 0 equals undefined. And you'll have 1 equals 1. And if I have some time later on, I'll do Desmos and show you that. I'm going to stop the video there, and I'll be right back.